Hello YouTube, I'm coming at you today with a topic that might sound quite paradoxical at first. How could your strength potential and your ability to move weight limit your size potential? How does that make sense? Before I dive into the topic, I want to start by discussing something that I think everyone should be aware of and that doesn't really need to be rehashed a thousand times, but that some people still cannot get through their minds and I do believe it's because there's a lot of contradicting opinions on YouTube fitness. There are a lot of people who might preach certain types of training that sort of contradict what I'm going to tell you right now, but it's an absolute truth. And for your own good benefit and progression, you need to take it to heart. Strength doesn't equal size across the board. Anyone who equates the two doesn't understand that there are different values. Yes, there is cross-pollination between the two. Yes, you're going to have to have both of the values in your training to be able to progress. But to think that by becoming stronger, you immediately become bigger is a misapplication of programming because training for strength and training for size is not the same thing. There are many people who have tried in recent years to bring it back because they saw what bodybuilding had become. It had become only just fluff. It was completely infected by enhanced lifters and therefore it needed to be said so that people would start doing compound movements again. They would start actually moving heavy weights again. The issue is, again with my metaphor of the pendulum, when the pendulum swings from one side to the other, it rarely stops in the middle. It goes all the way. So we went from people, bodybuilders, who said that you don't need to focus on strength to have a good physique to people who say you only need to focus on strength to have a good physique and are both wrong. And that's also the reason why I don't preach that on this channel. You train for hypertrophy, you're a bodybuilder. If you train like a powerlifter, you're going to look like a powerlifter, meaning that you're going to have the body that is going to be able to perform, not necessarily be aesthetic. And that also correlates with the idea that if your lift is high, then by definition, you must be big, which is also a complete misunderstanding of strength. Strength is leverages. This is also the reason why there is a discrepancy between natural bone potential between size and strength. I do believe that, yes, there are people who are going to be decently good without really training, but when it, when it comes to actual potential, the one for size is going to be revealed with time, meaning that it's tough to tell if someone has good or bad genetics for a muscle group before they even started training it. You really cannot tell. But when it comes to strength, you can. If you see someone who has extremely long arms, by default, this person is going to be a good puller. Why? They have good leverages. It's a visual cue. And that leverage can be applied immediately. The people who go to the gym and their first try, they pull 400 pounds, are people who have good leverages for the most part or who are blessed for strength. These individuals are the ones I'm targeting in this video and also the ones that fall on the other side of the spectrum, meaning that this is going to be especially applicable to outliers in terms of strength and outliers in terms of weakness, in a sense. But I say that why? I say that because it should be obvious, but two people, if you compare two men and one has bigger legs than the other, this doesn't mean that the guy with the bigger legs has the bigger squat. It doesn't work like that. That being said, across the board, if you take someone with 20 inches legs and he grows to 25 inches, his squat has increased. If it hasn't increased, the guy is just a genetic, you know, anomaly, or, you know, some people would say it's steroids, but even on steroids, the absolute strength potential has grown because you've got, you've gained five inches. So that just to lay it completely flat when it comes to the debate of does size equal strength? The answer is no, it's more complicated than that and not being able to understand something so simple is going to truly limit you in terms of hypertrophy gains because it's, it's bodybuilding 101. Now I'm going to move on to the real topic of this video and the thing that you might think is a little bit strange because I just told you that if your strength potential grows, while strength doesn't equal size, it's going to result in size gains across the board. And that's correct if applied properly. And what you will see is that 
when it comes to thinking about that topic, a lot of people end up approaching it like a powerlifter when they want to really get the result of a bodybuilder. That's, of course, a major issue and a major mistake. But they keep at it. Why? Because strength is something that is going to give you immediate benefits or rather an immediate gratification. It's also the reason why I encourage people to base their progress on their lift because your lift is going to go up and up and up every week and every month. So it gives you something tangible that you can actually look at and say, okay, I'm not wasting my time. I'm actually gaining size. I'm, I'm getting stronger because it's correlated. Thing is, if you take that mindset all the way, as I explained before, and you become an extremist, what ends up happening is you focus only on that number and you completely forget that that strength gain was supposed to be for size gains. And now it's only for strength because you only focus on it. And that ends up being a, a circle of destruction for the people who engage in it. Why? Because you're going to focus on strength. Your size is not going to progress that much because you're training for strength instead of training for size. And the more you do that, the more you are losing your condition and your ability to train for size. So you're not going to lose any size, although you could, but you're basically shoehorning yourself in a path that wasn't yours in the first place. And the biggest culprits of that are people who are very good at strength, people who have good leverages or who have a good genetic for that. It doesn't really matter. Strength is strength. If you're strong, you're strong. You can find a thousand excuses to cover up for the fact that you yourself are not strong or that someone is stronger. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's just what it is. But for the people who have that potential and who want to train bodybuilding, because if they want to train powerlifting, that's a different uh, story altogether. The issue is that if you get sucked into the strength training principles, you're going to be completely disappointed with the size gains you make. Why? Because you're training at something that you're already good at, and therefore you're going to quickly exceed the standards that any normal person is going to be able to reach, but you're not going to get the gains that you wish from that. For example, if some guy goes into the gym, skinny guy, and he can somehow overpress 150 pounds first try with good form, that guy is going to have a strength potential on the overhead press that widely exceeds normal people. Thing is, he's going to look at some gym bro who can only overhead press one plate and think, how come that guy has big shoulders and I have small shoulders? I need to get stronger on the overhead press. And this is what I just explained before. They stop thinking about size and they think about strength because they were told, get stronger, you'll get bigger. So what do they do? They're going to focus on gaining strength. And how do they usually go about it? Low reps. They're going to try and accumulate low reps at high intensity to push the progression. So they might get really good at the movement when it comes to technical abilities. But when you look at the tonnage they ingrained, it's basically nothing. The guy who has a one plate of red press probably does a ton of volume. At the end of the day, he does five times your tonnage. And yet you're still stronger. And this is why I talk about the so-called destruction. That guy who had good strength potential is going to keep getting stronger. So his overhead press is going to go to 185, 205, 225. He still has small shoulders. And yet he was told that if he could overhead press two plates, he would have big shoulders. But that was a lie. That would be true for someone like me. If I can get to 225 on the overhead press, we can bet I'm going to have massive shoulders. I don't think it's ever going to happen. But for someone who's blessed with strength, it's not going to result in anything. So now what? What does that person do? From what I usually see with this person, what they do is they give up on size because they think that they just cannot have it. They think that since they managed to get that high number on the lift and nothing happened, then nothing will happen. Well, if these people, if you, if you listen to me and you're in this case, actually train for reps, for tonnage accumulation, they would see the size gains, but they can't. And that's also the issue with... Uh, that type of phenom in a sense is that since they have innate strength and since we base the ability of people to give advice on their strength for some reason, they will not be open to receiving critiques for people who are weaker than them. 
Issue is 99% of lifters are going to be weaker than, weaker than them because they are gifted. So now they've created uh, an environment where they don't get the results they want and they cut themselves off from people giving them advice because they're stronger than them. So they're only after that remains one thing, which is strength. And this is what I would call full power lifters. And you see them everywhere on YouTube Fitness. Guys who train full strength, but they don't really compete in powerlifting. You sense sort of that what they really care about is aesthetics and size, but they just, they, they reached a point where they started to, they started lying to themselves because they're so good at strength that they, they just told themselves, I'm going to do strength. Even though they have no passion for it, it comes easy, so I'm just going to do it. And since this usually gives them praise and attention, because we do think that strength is pretty cool, admittedly, I also think strength is pretty cool, they just are content with that. The issue is that there's no passion here. And those individuals tend to be quite bitter, because they're not really pursuing what they want to pursue. I know a lot of people who care about strength, and they care only about strength. If you tell them, hey, you look like garbage, they don't care. They only care about the, perfor the performance aspect of their body because they have a true love and appreciation for powerlifting, Olympic weightlifting, strongman. But if you fall outside of that, what are you? You're not a bodybuilder, but you're not really a powerlifter either. You're in that weird limbo where you're nothing. And that to me is due to that strength pursuit. It's due to that. I know we went quite far, but in my opinion, it explains itself perfectly. So what I really want to convey with this video is do not let your natural abilities dictate the way you train and dictate your rep scheme and training principles. Try and actually accumulate tonnage. Try and do variations. Don't just do your minimalist work or you do your main movement and that's it. Because again, if you're gifted, that will help you progress. You will progress on that. And you're going to see that strength progression and think that this relates to size progression, but it won't, not for you. For someone like me who is weak, naturally weak and who has weak lifts, yes, if my lifts go up, I'm getting bigger, I'm getting stronger, it works. But it's because the relationship between my ability to put on strength and size is completely skewed towards size. You're the opposite, you put on strength easily and it's not necessarily that you cannot put on size easily, but because your ability for strength is so high, it limits your ability for size. And that's what I said in the title, that your strength potential is actually limiting your side gains. So try and apply that to your training if you're like this. If what you want is bodybuilding, this will get you out of there. There is a reason why there are certain powerlifters who have insane lifts, but they don't look like they lift. Because for the most part, they don't care. It doesn't apply. But if it applies to you, if what your true pursuit is size, then what I explained is going to give you clear keys and indications and pathways to follow to get out of that funk. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.